in the last class uh, we started discussing to find out if we can predict whether a metal will undergo corrosion or not. We will continue that one to make this concepts clear. Before we do this, I like to summarize what we discussed in the last class. We said that for any reaction be it a corrosion or be it a chemical reaction or a physical transformation. The first criteria for the spontaneity, the reaction to occur spontaneous the corrosion is the free energy change. The free energy change delta G has to be negative this is what we saw in the last class. But if you talk about a corrosion measuring the free energy change is more difficult for every corrosion processes. So, what we did? We looked at the corrosion processes especially the aqueous corrosion processes in detail, we said that the electrochemical corrosion, the electrochemical reaction is the basis for aqueous corrosion, right. You may take for example, zinc reacting with hydrochloric acid giving rise to zinc chloride and plus the hydrogen gas. This may look like a simple chemical reaction, but in essence it is an electrochemical reaction, right. If you recollect, we said that you can write this as zinc interacting with 2 plus ions in the solution and then zinc is getting oxidized and the hydrogen ions are getting reduced to form this. So, there is an oxidation process, there is a reduction process. So, you can separate this into zinc going as zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons and 2 H plus plus 2 electron giving as the hydrogen process and we call this an oxidation and we call this as reduction process. So, if you assume that that this is in a electrochemical process, we go for electrochemical criteria. It is easy to measure the potential of in electrochemical systems. How do you measure this potentials? How do you relate it to the free energy change? We also saw that we use the Nernst relationship. What is the Nernst relationship? It is between the free energy change delta G is related to minus N F E is what we saw in the last class. So, you can relate the free energy change to the potential using this the Nernst relationship right. Now, for a chemical reaction you have a relationship delta G is equal to delta G naught plus R T L n activity of the products upon the activity of the reactants you saw that right. For any reaction we can write like this. And using the equation 1 into 2 to do this, 
you can convert this into E equal to E naught minus R T by N F L N activity of the product upon the activity of the reactants. And this is the the Nernst equation right, this is the Nernst equation. How do you read this equation? Let us take the example given here zinc right. Let me look at zinc immersed in in zinc ions right, this immersed in zinc ions. Right, this is the zinc metal, the in solution, it establishes an equilibrium, right, wherein zinc goes as zinc 2 plus and again it comes back. In the process, the electrons are getting exchanged between zinc ions and the zinc metals. The potential is so established between the zinc and the solution containing zinc ion, we call them as an equilibrium potentials, right. And this potential E is called as what? Is called as equilibrium potentials. Okay. Please understand it is neither oxidation nor reduction right the reaction occurs forward the reaction occurs backward so you cannot call this potential as either an oxidation potential we don't call either as a reduction potential we call them as what we call them as the equilibrium potentials this is a very important thing in understanding the electrochemical equilibria. So, what I mean by that? If I write an equilibrium in this manner, or you write like this both of them would exhibit what? Both of them would exhibit same potential irrespective of what? Irrespective of the way you write it. So, the potential is sign invariant you saw this in the last class. So, how do I get the equilibrium potential? What is the criteria for that? Can anybody recollect? How do I get the equilibrium potential if I give you a concentration of zinc let us say 0.1 molar suppose I give 0.1 molar. I substitute in the equation right, but equation will be always written in such a way that E is equal to ok. E naught plus R T by N F L N activity of oxidants upon the activity of reductants. So, only when you write like that you will get the E value correctly, otherwise E value could be changing ok. So, this is the, the most important thing in determining the equilibrium potential for any electrochemical system right. We discussed this in detail in the last class right, any if you have any questions on this. No questions? So, let me proceed now. Now, let us go into this the next equation right. Like we have seen E 
is equal to E naught plus 2.303 RT by N F and log of the activity of oxidants upon the activity of reductants, right. You know what R is, right? R is what? R equal to the gas constant, which is equal to 8.314 joules per mole okay, per Kelvin. Okay. Is this joule or kilojoule? Joule, it is a joule, it is okay. You can also see you can represent as kilo calories, or, I mean, this is, I mean, it is fine, okay. Um, and T is is a temperature in in Kelvin, right. What is F? F is equal to Faraday. Constant is given as roughly ninety six thousand five hundred coulombs. Right. If temperature is assumed to be is equal to twenty five degrees Celsius. You have two seventy. You convert that into it. What happens? Is equal to two ninety-eight Kelvin. Then you substitute everything in this here two point not three not three RT by F. So two point three not three RT by F turns out to be zero point not five nine. You can calculate this at leisure time and uh, you see that the number that is given is the correct number or not. So, now using this you should be in a position to calculate the equilibrium potential for any electrochemical system right. Be it Fe 2 plus is in equilibrium with Fe 3 plus zinc is in equilibrium with zinc 2 plus ions. No matter what the equilibrium is, you should be in a position to determine clearly what the equilibrium potential is. This is calculation. How to measure this? How do you measure this? How do you measure this? Is it a measurable quantity or I say no, no, it can be only calculated. Can you measure this? Right? So, I should be able to measure this. We have seen in the last class again that it is not possible to measure the absolute value. Why? If you are going to use another probe in the in the electrolyte, for example, if I consider an electrochemical system, some metal, take for simplicity same zinc is in equilibrium with zinc ions. If I have to measure it, I need what? I need a probe. If a moment I put a probe here and I measure with a voltmeter. And this probe also will have an equilibrium. So, you are going to measure only a potential difference, you cannot actually measure the 
absolute values it is not possible right so how does one solve the problem the problem is solved by considering this equilibrium h plus plus 2 electron giving rise to hydrogen in the standard state consider E for that is considered as a 0 here. So, we consider that is a 0 and all the potentials measured are in relation to hydrogen right. So, in relation to hydrogen that you can measure it. So, you need an electrode, you need an electrode which is also in equilibrium. So, how do you visualize this? Can somebody visualize an experiment measurement of equilibrium potential? Yeah, you have cell. So, let us say I want to measure the electrochemical potential of iron immersed in F e 2 plus ions. What do you do? I take a beaker, I put F e 2 plus ions of a given concentration, I dip ion electrode and other side what I will have? I would have a hydrogen electrode. The hydrogen electrode in what state? The standard state. What is the standard state? the activity of H plus ions equal to unity, the hydrogen partial pressure is equal to 1 atmosphere and I use a voltmeter. What is that voltmeter? An high impedance voltmeter. The measured potential between these two are called as the equilibrium potential of the ion Fe 2 plus system. Very simple, but in practice if I have, to, I have to measure the potential by use a hydrogen electrode, it is very complicated. Why it is complicated? What is the hydrogen electrode? I will just define to you what hydrogen electrode is. Okay. I would say you would have some beaker okay, made up of let us say uh, glass. I immerse a platinum electrode here right and then what I do I take an acid let us say hydrochloric acid wherein the activity of H plus is equal to 1. I pass through this hydrogen gas. What should be the partial pressure of hydrogen here? The partial pressure of hydrogen here has to be 1 atmosphere. The potential is so measured equal to standard potentials. If I have to do this in the lab, it is very cumbersome, not very easy right. Can you do this very easily? Not very easy. So, you are going to use reference electrode which are easily can be made very easily. And these reference electrodes are what? There are some of them called as calomel electrode. Okay. And you can also have silver, silver chloride electrodes. You can also have copper, copper sulfate electrode. There are several of them are there, right? What is the caramel electrode? It consists of uh, mercury and mercurous chloride like this. And these electrodes have potentials depending upon the concentration in this case concentration of chloride, concentration of chloride here. And if you are going to use a saturated caramel electrode, saturated 
calum electrode. Okay, the potential is plus 0 0.2444 four volts with respect to standard hydrogen electrode. Similarly, you can also have silver, silver chloride and the chloride is, is saturated. Then the potential is, is equal to plus 0 0.197 volt. Okay, I just give an example and there are several electrodes, uh, you should refer this uh, in standard books. Okay. In fact, there is a book on reference electrodes only, how to make this reference electrode in the, in the, in the lab. You can, you can construct these things yourself only. So, these values uh, you can obtain from any books, any standard books. So, there is no problem. Okay. So, so far I suppose you are clear about how do you calculate a reference, I am sorry, how do you calculate a equilibrium potentials? You know how to measure the equilibrium potential of the systems. Okay. Then, how do you use this potential to predict if the corrosion occurs or not? That is given by this concept, what is called as E cell is, is equal to what? E cathode minus E anode here, right. This is for the cathode. and this is for the anode and by convention this has to be always positive, it cannot be negative at all, it has to be only positive right. So, use this criteria, so this is the criteria. is the criteria for that. Right. Now, what is the corrosion? In corrosion, you have two reactions, one is oxidation, we call as anodic and other is a reduction which is what which is cathodic. The only thing is we do not know which will be cathode and which will be anode that we do not know. Okay. Now, let us take this example and see how this can be used to predict if the corrosion occurs or not. I have given you a handout, okay. please take this handout. What is given there? What is given is the standard oxidation reduction potentials, it is also called redox potentials. Okay. I would simply call it as standard potentials. What is the standard potential? What is the standard potential? Yeah. So, let us go back to this equation. You go back to this equation what you have seen before. You go back to this equation here, right. Let us take this equation one of this, uh, you take this equation here, when the activity of the of the, the reluctant, the activity of the oxidant or, or you can take this equation, the activity of oxidant and the reductant, they are unity, the equilibrium potential equal to standard potential. Please remember this, 
So, it is a special case of the equilibrium potential right it is it is essentially equilibrium potential the special case of the equilibrium potential right that I think is is what you should cut it. So, what is shown here take this table ok. Now, in the table let us take two cases take the case of say copper take the case of uh, let us say iron 2 and I am going to take copper and I am going to immerse in sulfuric acid. So, I am also going to take iron and immerse in, sulf in sulfuric acid ok. So, two cases iron in one normal sulfuric acid. So, ok and copper in one normal sulfuric acid. Some of you uh, would were not familiar with this uh, normality, molarity, I think you should read and maybe discuss with yourself and it will be hard for me to, to, to discuss here actually ok. So, please get yourself familiarized with the with this um, units of uh, concentrations uh, how do you really represent them actually ok. Just take two cases. So, I am going to have put it in this form of a diagram take here I am going to immerse copper here. one normal sulfuric acid and I am going to have iron in one normal sulfuric acid. Please notice they are de aerated huh? de aerated it means these are all de aerated no dissolved oxygen present in both the cases. Now, we need to predict if the corrosion occurs. I make your life more simpler for you. I will say that the partial pressure of hydrogen here is equal to 1 atmosphere and the partial pressure of hydrogen here equal to 1 atmosphere. I make it quite simple. Right. Now, you tell me how do we really solve the problem. Let us take this the table uh, where you have standard potentials given for the host of equilibrium and iron and copper equilibrium also given in this. Please tell me how do we solve this problem. So, what you have to do first of all? First of all, you have to write the corrosion equation, right? What will be the corrosion equation in both the cases? Let us say in the case of uh, iron, what will be the corrosion equation here? What do you think happens if you put iron in, in sulfuric acid? What do you think will happen? If it corrodes, what oxi what oxidizes? Yeah, iron will oxidize as Fe2 plus and hydrogen will as if if iron corrodes. Similarly, what will happen in the case of copper? So, copper should get oxidized as copper 2 plus or maybe copper a single plus and H plus ion should get reduced as hydrogen gas if copper is corroding. So, you start with the two equilibrium, two equilibria in, in this case. What are the equilibria? Let us take the case of iron for example. What are the two equilibria involved here that leads to corrosion? You have to start with two equilibria right. What are the equilibria that are involved here right? Before corrosion, 
there are two equilibria coming to picture. One is ion is in equilibrium with the F2 plus ions. Okay. Again, uh, to make it simple, I want to make this one more uh, variation here. You immerse ion in Fe2 plus and the concentration is equal to 1 molar, right. Similarly, in this case, I have a copper and copper 2 plus equal to 1 molar. I assume this make assumption, right. So, make it more simpler for you, okay. So, how do I start with? How do I start? Yeah. So, first of all, you calculate E cell, right. So, before calculate to get E cell, what do you need? Yeah. You need the equilibrium potential for two independent equilibria, right, is not it? So, you need to calculate E cell. To calculate E cell, you need what? You need the equilibrium potential for two. What are the equilibria here in, can you write? What are the equilibria involved in the case of iron? Can you please write here? in your papers, what is equilibrium involved here? So, involved are Fe 2 plus plus 2 electron gives you Fe is one equilibria. What is the other one? 2 H plus plus 2 electron gives you hydro is one equilibria, right. So, equilibrium 1, equilibrium 2 for this, right. What is for copper? 2 plus plus 2 electron gives you copper and 2 H plus to 2 electron gives you hydrogen. So, it is for 1 for 2. Now, these are the equilibria now, one should become cathode, other should become am I right or not? Okay. So, let us take the case of iron and try to solve the problem. So, what is the equilibrium potential? for F e 2 plus plus 2 electron F e with respect to this problem minus point. Why you take minus 0.44? Why did you take that? Yeah, why did you take that? You were right. I mean, why did you take minus 0.44? Yeah. Reduce also will they have same potential only? Huh? Same. Will sign will change if I am going to take iron as getting oxidized or reduced? Is the equilibrium potential sign invariant or sign uh, variant? Right? Invariant, right? So minus 0.44. But why not minus point something else? Why did you choose? You are right. Why did you choose? You look at the problem there. Yeah, you are talking about a standard here. See, iron is immersed in activity is equal to 1. That is why you are taking minus 0.44. If the concentration is different, for example, if I say it is 0.1 molar, would you have minus 0.44? So, what happens in that case? You have to now calculate that actually, right? You have to calculate it. So, please understand. So, you need to calculate that in order to get the values. So, I made the life simple by assuming that both equilibria are in the standard state. So, we are using the standard potentials. So, let us assume that both copper is corroding and iron is corroding. Let us assume that. Please find out whether corrosion occurs or not. Can you please make a calculation and see? Assume that, assume both copper and iron corrode. So, what happens? Can you find a E cell if you assume that uh, that iron is uh, corroding and copper is corroding, what happened to E cell? Since E cell of iron is positive, therefore, iron is corroded, corro but E cell for copper is negative, therefore, copper is not corroded. It will not corrode, right. So, it is possible that you can come to a right conclusion. You may assume whatever you like, 
you may you may even assume that ion is not going to corrode and say that it is E C minus E A, then you will get into a negative sign. So, it is possible to to compute and say that the metal corrode or does not corrode. I hope each of you will be able to make this calculations E cell is equal to E C minus E A. So, what happens we assumed that uh, ion is corroding. So, what happened minus of minus 0 0.44 and what is E C it is 0 E cell is equal to plus 0.44 volt. So, ion corrodes ok. In this case to take this this case E cell equal to what is equal to you assume that copper is corroding that means E cell in this case is equal to 0 minus of plus how much 0 0.337. So, E cell is equal to minus 0 0.337. So, is 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 a volt. So, copper cannot corrode. So, understood ok. So, it is possible for us to predict if a metal will undergo corrosion or not. Now, measurement of electrochemical potential is much easier huh? it is very easy you go to lab and in about 5 minutes you can measure it ok. All you need to have is a voltmeter of high impedance value, you need a reference electrode and the metal that you are interested to measure the metal or other system whose potential required to be measured. So, I suppose you people now are now clear in terms of the first concept of how do we really predict if the metal will undergo corrosion or not. To extend this argument, I want to pose a problem to you. The problem is I take tin ok in in water of pH 7 ok. Two conditions take water and immersed in here. In another case I take water I have tin I close this here it is open ok is what I in this case it is closed no oxygen present huh? no oxygen present. ok and the water of pH is about 7. So, the pH of the water here you know the water pH is 7. I make the following assumptions what are the assumption here? The assumptions are one large amount of water pH does not change with corrosion ok. Two in the closed system in the closed system what you see here 
the space between water and the lid and the top lid is very small. Okay? And you have large amount of of tin in the system. You understood the problem? Okay? I have given you pictorially how they are looking like one beaker where I put tin, I have taken in water of pH 7. Other case, I have taken uh, tin in water, but it is closed and this space is very small. Okay. I have and it is no oxygen percent. I have two questions for you. The question is will tin undergo corrosion or not? Okay. One is okay. Now the questions are question will tin undergo corrosion. Okay. First thing. The second thing is can tin continue to corrode irrespective of the time. of the time of exposure. You understood the problem? How do you address this problem. How can you solve this problem? The first question for example, what I can give you is I can give one more um, information for you. I can other information that I like to give you what information that you need because it is not sufficient. The other additional information is SN is corroding if it, if it corrodes is going to be as SN2 plus. Okay. And the concentration of SN2 plus always remains 10 power minus 6 moles per liter. Okay the partial pressure of hydrogen can be considered as say 10 power minus uh, now this I am not going to change this ok is left out ok ok. Now, what do you think will happen in this case? The partial pressure of hydrogen may vary. I put this way. I did not part the partial pressure of hydrogen may vary, may vary with pH 6, ok. Or you start with let us say you can start with R, start with let us say 10 power minus uh, 1 atmosphere, start with 10 power one minus 1 atmosphere ok.
I put this, I will go back to this problem. I have defined this problem in this manner and I have tin here, I have tin exposed to water, one case the vessel is open to atmosphere and the other case vessel is closed, the space between the water and the top lid in this case is smaller, the pH of the water remains same all the time at 7 and S n 2 plus in this case is uh, 10 power minus 6 here minus 6 here moles per liter right and uh, and of course, there is no oxygen percent. If that is the case, then can you say how these systems are going to behave in terms of corrosion? Are they going to behave corrosion with the time same manner or it is going to be different? If so, how they are going to be different? or to start with can you think that tin will undergo corrosion or not. So, that prediction you should be able to now do that. I think you are you know having enough understanding of what electrochemical equilibrium is, you understand what the corrosion is with the equations that you have, the relationship that you understood you should be able to tell how these systems are behaving the corrosion point of view. Now, I just want to know, I just want to give this your, uh, your assignment for you and uh, I want to see this answer in, when you come to the next class ok. So, please do solve the problem and uh, you know send it by email and the TA will be able to go through and correct it. You all can discuss, please everybody discuss but do not copy your answers ok. Understanding is free, you should always discuss then only you will able to understand the concept ok, but solve the problem yourself independently do not do that ok. So, um, please do this and tell me how these systems will respond with respect to time ok, that way we can do that and based on this I will give you some more problems and I think we can we can work on that ok to make your understanding. Uh, better and better. Before um, I move on to the next topic of uh, how do you calculate the corrosion rate? We talked about to predict corrosion rate. How do you calculate corrosion rate? I want you to understand one concept ok. See they are very elementary you know I am not supposed to discuss in this course, but they are very vital if you need to understand corrosion that is the concept of pH. What is pH? Yeah? Yeah? Corresponding hydrogen ion. Yeah, it is related to the activity of hydrogen ions in a solution. So, it is a concentration of hydrogen ions in solution. Please, I am going to use activity and concentration in a synonymous manner because otherwise our life is going to be complicated. You cannot solve any of the problems ok. So, it is related to hydrogen ion concentration. How, how is it related to? Yeah, it is negative logarithm of of h plus is equal to Please understand this. Please look at. So, when I when I say pH 5 and pH 9, please understand the question. When I say pH 5 and pH 9, how many times the hydrogen concentration change? Huh? 10 to 4. So, it is very important. People think oh, the corrosion of steel is happening at uh, 4 and uh, you will get surprised it does not happen at, at, at pH 9, it is only 5, it is not 5, it is a 5 orders of difference in the hydrogen ion concentration. Corrosion involves reduction of the H plus ions. So, please get that feel of it what you are talking about. 
you also try to get the feel of what is molar and what is equivalent weight. Please understand these are the terms you should know. I am not going to talk about here atomic weight, molecular weight, equivalent weight. These are the terms I think you people should uh, for a time period get familiarized with and even the concept like solubility product, ok. They are chemical terms, but they are very, very useful for us to understand why corrosion occurs in some conditions why corrosion does not occur in some other condition right. See please look at we are scientists as much as engineers you need to understand why, why is not there I think you, you, you know point in studying m corrosion course ok. There is no do's and do not for you guys it is for you to get analyze tell what happens based on what you see in the environment. You go to industry not simple you know. You find the reaction occurs some reaction vessel corroded you know and they say oh this company will be using another company says it is failing here. They rise the temperature only by you know 5 degrees start cracking. Unless you understand the relation between the parameters that affect corrosion you cannot really give a solution to the problem ok. So, you need to understand the interrelation between corrosion and various factors affecting the corrosion processes. So, so, we will end our discussion related to what is called as the prediction of corrosion. Now, comes can we calculate Then you calculate corrosion weight. Say I have immersed zinc in let us say hydrochloric acid. You know how to compute whether it corrodes or not, whether it corrodes or not use in a equation. Now, in zinc in hydrochloric acid what will be rate of corrosion ok. So, what will be the rate of corrosion of zinc? So, question Can you make a, a calculation? What are the equations? What are the governing equations? What are the governing principles for that? That is our next step. Now, let us look at the corrosion and in details, right? Let us look at the corrosion here. I am looking at corrosion like this. I am illustrating this corrosion process in simpler terms right. Before corrosion occurs 
zinc is in equilibrium with the zinc ions right see that hydrogen is in equilibrium with the ions both of them establish potentials what do what do they call that potential called equilibrium potentials right now does it corrode here does zinc corrode here does not corrode the rate of forward reaction equal to rate of backward reaction will there be any hydrogen evolution here no hydrogen evolution because hydrogen ions combined with uh, electron form hydrogen gas and hydrogen gas in turn give electrons and form H plus they are equilibrium conditions. So, I define this as H plus gives you this H and define this as zinc 2 plus plus 2 electron and zinc this here. This to happens now right. And if there is a standard state for our assumption the voltage E for that is equal to 0 0 and the standard state E is equal to minus 0 0.44. And I shot this what happens? I use an electrical cable to connect these two what will happen? Yeah. What will happen? The potential of this is 0 0 and potential of this is minus 0.4. Now, I am just shorting this two. So, what do you think will happen? When you when you take a, a copper wire, I have a resistance in the in the the copper wire, I have a resistor okay. The resistance is infinite and this side I, I have voltage which is let us say minus 0 0.4 and this side the voltage is 0 0 and now I lower the resistance right? I make it 0 like. So, what will happen? Current will, will the current flow or not? the current will start flowing. The moment you remove the resistance, the current starts flowing. Am I right or not? So, you have an infinite resistance, they are not connected, talk to each other. Now, they have independent potentials, the independent equilibrium that you have, right. And I shot this with a wire, this will start moving towards, what happens? Let us look at this, I draw like this, this is called a potential axis the potential axis, this is 0, 0, this is H plus H and this is minus 0 0.44 volt, volt this is F u 2 plus and F u. I remove resistance, what will happen? This potential starts moving towards this and this will start moving towards this. Will it happen or not? Is not it? So, the 0, the potential of the hydrogen electrode will tend towards positive, I am sorry, the potential of the uh, hydrogen electrode tend towards negative and that of zinc will tend towards positive, move towards like this and the current will start flowing. Am I right? If I put an ammeter here, I can measure what is the amount of current that is flowing. I can use Faraday's laws and I can determine the rate of corrosion. Can I? Can I? Can I not? Right. So, if I can use an ammeter here, I measure the current and I know the current, I can use the Faraday's laws, I can determine the corrosion rate. measure it, it is called measurement. Can I calculate it without measuring using an ammeter, can I determine what will be the amount of current that is flowing between this and this? If there are governing equation, 
then that governing equation will tell us. So, what should be the amount of current flowing here and that current can be used to calculate the corrosion rate based on the Faraday equations. So, what we are going to do in the in the subsequent lecture is to find out the governing equations here between the voltage and the current. So, please notice when the potential is start moving from here to this, the current is going to move. More the potential is moving, more will be the amount of current that is flowing in the system. So, my idea is can I get a relation between the potential that moves up coming down and the current that is flowing on this electrode on this electrode. If I know it, I can calculate it. I do not have to go and do an experiment in the laboratory actually right. I do not have to do that. So, our task now is to find out the governing equations and then use that equations to compute the corrosion rate of the metals. Am I clear? Am I clear to you? Ok, that is what we are going to do that. So, then we can answer this question can we calculate the corrosion rate? This of course, is a the very involved you know derivations. If you take the Bakris and Reddy book on modern electrochemistry, the kinetics are very well derived and nice things are there and uh, there is called as Butler Walmer equation. I am not going to derive the equation and those who are interested please read that book, uh, read other books ok as to how the Butler Walmer equation is going to be uh, derived. I am going to make a very simplistic approach. So, that you know you are from somebody from you know metallurgy background, somebody from electrical engineering background, somebody with mechanical background. So, I do not want you to flood with the equations, but yet I want you to appreciate the governing relationship, the governing equation. So, that you can able to calculate yourself tomorrow ok. So, that is our next task of how do we really compute the corrosion rate of the metals. Am I right actually am I clear to you ok. So, far what we discussed are you people clear ok. So, let us go to the next step of how we compute the corrosion. Let me start with the equilibrium condition right. Let me start with the equilibrium condition. What is the equilibrium condition? Let me take a simple electrochemical equilibria. What is the equilibria? Let us take this equilibria H plus plus electron gives you hydrogen gas. It is very known to you. In the standard state, in the standard state, what is the E value for this? Are you clear? This is an equilibrium. What does it mean? The hydrogen releases electrons, it forms H plus, H plus accepts electron and forms hydrogen gas. So, it is an equilibrium condition. So, how do I pictorially put this? I put this pictorially like this. This is the a platinum wire, a metal and I have H plus, I have hydrogen gas. Now, here H plus. Now, what is happening? Please look at if I able to visualize, if I have the ability to go and see through my eyes what is happening at the interface right. This is the interface right. What is the interface? this is by platinum metal and this is the acid that you have right. So, what is happening? 
one reaction is going as H plus, the other one H plus goes like this. Electrons are there, the electrons come over here only, ok, right. And it, it becomes what? It becomes now the hydrogen molecule. Please look at the rate of forward reaction equal to rate of backward reaction. Can I say this? So, the rate of forward reaction is equal to the rate of backward reaction, right. What is the forward reaction? The forward reaction here is is what is H going as H plus plus electrons. What is the backward reaction? H plus coming as as. What is the unit for rate of reaction? Any of you guys know? What is the unit for rate of reaction? R equal to is given as rate of reaction is equal to what? is equal to moles per unit time. Now, we are going to do it in an area going to be unit area am I right? What are the moles? We have given you before how many units of hydrogen is getting transformed to H plus. So, mole per unit time per unit area is what is going to be ok, not unit you simply say you area here not unit area it is area right. Mole time area gives you this Now, what is happening here please look at please you have to be with me now. In this reaction electrons are released in this reaction electrons are accepted. So, what does it mean? It means what is the direction of current in normal electrical engineering? What is the direction of current? The direction of current current flow right direction of current flow is equal to reverse of the flow of of negative charges why why negative charges it can be electron it can be any ion it can be anything right so it is the direction of flow of current is 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 the opposite of the direction of flow of negative charges now, please look at this interface, we are talking about electrochemical reaction. Now, look at this interface now. Now, current in this case current how does current flow? The current is flowing from the solution to the metal here the current is I am sorry in this case the current is flowing from the metal to the solution. In this case the current is flowing from the solution to the metal right am I right or not? Is it ok or not ok? not seeing any response from you people. Hmm? So, it is it is is it is electrochemical equilibrium what is electrochemical equilibrium that is a flow of current associated with the reaction rate. Now, the, now when hydrogen gas is converted to H plus H plus ion moves from the metal surface to the solution it moves like that. So, it carries a current in this direction when H plus ions are getting reduced it carries a charge in the opposite direction that means, the current is now flowing like this. So, that means, the equivalent of that is going to be I ok uh, like this here I is going to be in this direction can I write like this ok. In the first case I is in this direction in this case in this case I is in the this direction current moves differently because the charges are different in this cases. Am I right or not? Understood? Now, let us put all of them together. What do you understand? You understand that at the interface there is no net oxidation, there is no net reduction, but the current is flowing back and forth, it goes forward it goes backward 
net amount of flow is 0, so the net amount of reaction is 0, so no corrosion, no reduction, no oxidation taking place. System is under equilibrium condition, am I right or not? So, system is now defined as under equilibrium condition. How do I calculate I? Can I calculate I here? Is it possible to calculate I? I can calculate I if I know the rate of reaction. How do I do that? Okay, I is equal what is equal for I? I equal to what? Moles about okay, where time, where area multiplied by what? Par uh, number of electrons into Faraday, am I right? I equal to the moles per unit area, the number of electrons, am I right or not? So, this is I, right? So, R is equal to I upon N cap. Have I made clear to you or not? Too much uh, too much of electrical engineering, too much of electrochemistry, I suppose this would be easier, right? Now, I have converted this rate of reaction into current ok using this equation now. So, I upon n number of electrons per Faraday is your this all you might have studied in 10th or you know 11th and 12th and all I suppose ok. So, what I am trying to say now the rate of reaction is related to the current here ok current here. Please notice in this case what happens the rate of forward is equal to the rate of backward and so the i is equal to i naught yeah oh i'm sorry yeah okay i i go back now in that case okay it's good huh? it's good that you guys are telling that yeah now we have seen now the rate of reaction r is given as I upon N F. Under equilibrium, what happens? The rate of oxidation is equal to rate of reduction, ok. Then what happens? Then and what happens now? I naught by N F ok. That means, I tends to become I naught. What is I naught? I naught is defined as exchange current density ok. Suppose you guys are now uh, get a clear picture about what is an electrochemical interface. What is an electrochemical interface? I stop here now. What is an electrochemical interface? The electrochemical interface is where there is oxidation and reduction taking place, right? Am I right or not? And so the current flows back and forth. If the rate of forward reaction equal to rate of backward reaction, then the system is under equilibrium conditions. At that condition, the amount of current transfer is equal to exchange current density. Okay. Okay. Let me just draw here. Okay. Let us take the case of hydrogen gas converted to H plus. Now, what is happening? Now, the electrons are released on the surface. 
right. Now, please look at hydrogen here is moving air as H plus, what is the, what is the, what is the direction of current? This is the direction of current, it is going, please current is a vector now, please look at current is a vector, huh? ok. Now, H plus moves here and accepts one electron, what happens? It goes out as a gas. What is the direction of current here? I is moving toward that. Now, this I and this I must be same or same, it should be different, it should be same if the system has to be under the equilibrium. And so, and this I is equal to I naught, ok, if the system is under equilibrium condition. And this I naught is related to rate of reaction through this equation, this equation right I naught upon n and f. Look at this ok. So, today I think we should stop here. The exchange condensity is an equilibrium parameter, please understand. The exchange condensity is a an equilibrium parameter similar to what? similar to the equilibrium potential. Can I say that? The exchange condensity is a parameter similar to equilibrium potentials. But the only problem is it is not easy to compute I naught, we will we'll, we'll try to talk later, but this is a difficult subject. It is not easy to compute I naught, that is the real difficulty that we have. Okay. But it is enough for us to say that I naught represents the equilibrium existing of the interface between the solid surface and the electrolyte that we are into, we, we, are, we are discussing ok. So, with this I will stop here, we will continue in the, in the next class ok. And I hope that in, a, in one or two classes, we should be able to get an answer, how do we compute corrosion rate for a given metal ok. Because you know that corrosion is a non equilibrium state, it is a spontaneous one right. So, first you define what the equilibrium state is, then you start deviating from the equilibrium, then you are going to get into corrosion right. So, first definition is how do I define an equilibrium condition. So, define an equilibrium condition, then I think I will know how it deviates and that deviation is going to be now computed ok. So, today I will stop here, so, please do go through these notes actually and understand what you are discussing. As you see that the complexities of electrochemistry will keep building up ok and it will be very easy provided you understand step by step ok these concepts ok. So, concepts is the key without concepts it is very difficult for you to make any any calculations or computations. Because corrosion is there are so many variety of forms of corrosion ok, different environments, different metals, so many of them ok. You cannot give a table and then tell you know please make a computation. You must know the governing equation and then try to use the equation. So, that the corrosion rate can be calculated for any system that you are interested actually right. So, that is the purpose of the this, this particular lecture ok. So, please uh, go through that and uh, and uh, you please solve the problem which I have given you. So, that that gives you a clear understanding of how we predict a metal will undergo corrosion or not ok. So, today we will stop it.